Hey everybody, I've been offline for a couple of days. Um, the last time I broadcast was Thursday, but it was a powerful uh, couple of sessions, so I hope you enjoyed that. If you're signing on, I'm back in Atlanta. I'm with my man, Sir James Buchanan, who's taken me to the Federal Reserve for a very important announcement, which I will talk about later today or tomorrow. This is my man, Sir James Buchanan, uh, who, if you like that uh, t-shirt, the Black Wall Street, he gave it to me. Okay, um, I uh, want to talk about, if you're signing in, sign in at the bottom. I'm Chairman, by the way, I'm John Bryant, founder, chairman, CEO of Operation Hope, and author of uh, How the Poor Can Save Capitalism, Rebuilding the Path to the Middle Class, and I'm talking about that straight up and no chaser today, how to rebuild the path to the middle class, how to save America, uh, is what I'm talking about today with you. Uh, and I'm talking to all new college uh, graduates, those who graduated last week, this week, next week, uh, the parents of those young people, and those who have dropped out uh, of college and, uh, and of high school. Um, so sign up, sign in, put your comments below. I'll either answer in real time or I'll answer this afternoon after the Federal Reserve speech. So here it is, and I'm going to make this quick, fast, and no chaser. We're at war. The nation and the world is at war, but it's not a military war. It's a war of jobs. It's a war of relevancy. It's a war about uh, the reclaiming of the American dream. And I want you to be the soldiers. So if you're graduating from college, um, you think you've been stressed out with grades. No, <laughs> you've actually had it easy. Uh, you've had structure, you've had uh, an environment, you've had, you've had you know, dorm rooms and apartments and mom and dad paying or student loans covering. Uh, but all that's soon over. It's either soon over or it's already over. You about to join this thing called life. And I don't want you to rush into it, right? Because you've got this time now between about 22 years of age and 28, that five years where you're still idealistic, where the world hasn't beat the hope out of you, where you still believe that you can change the world, where you still believe that you can make a difference. And I want you to keep that. And I want you to, to find a way to roll in, and revel in that. I want you to dream big dreams. Why? Because America needs you to win, right? So America needs a million startups a year. I'll repeat that. America needs, I want to thank my friend Jim Clifton, Chairman and CEO of Gallup, who really got me focused on this. He's on my board. But uh, and you ever read the book, The Coming Jobs War, in addition to, the, to How the Poor Can Save Capitalism? Read that book. So America needs a million startups a year right to win we're the largest economy in the world for all those who are complaining about america try going someplace else and <laughs> see how that feels right ain't nobody leaving ain't nobody getting out of here going to haiti or getting out of here going to live i mean to go into sudan you know for all our complaints and criticisms america is really an amazing unique place in the world she's not a country she's an idea and we can make her any way uh, that we want and I think the poor, the underserved, have always saved America. That's another video for another time. Uh, I detail it in my book. And we're going to do it again, this time including more people with more colors, more hues, more views uh, to make America fairer, brighter, bro bro broader, flatter, more inclusive. All right, but that's a, another topic. Come back to this one. So we have 350 million people in America. There's about 7 billion people in the world. Uh, of the 350 million people in America, uh, you've got about 26 million companies. Uh, I'm going to give you this really short because I want to I want to really hit on the message here. Of the of those companies, you have 974 that employ 10,000 people or more. So if you want to leave college and go work for Google or HP or Facebook or IBM or Bank of America, or pick the company. They're not hiring. <laughs> okay, they're hiring, but they're probably not hiring a lot of you. Uh, and, and, and it's just simply because they're going to hire their friends, they're going to hire anybody, but, but big companies like that are not in the hiring business, they're in the efficiency business. So where do jobs come from? Jobs come from small businesses, startups, shoot-ups, entrepreneurs in years three through year seven. Seventy percent of all businesses in America, 500 employees or less. Half of all businesses in America, 100 employees or less. And what America needs is a million startups a year, but we have more small business deaths then we have small business births. That's since 2008. For the first time in 35 years, we've got more small businesses dying than giving birth. So before you go go work for some big company, all right, I want you to I want you to, to, to reimagine everything. Don't just think about getting a job. Maybe think about creating a job, becoming an entrepreneur, uh, creating your own wealth, creating your own opportunity, and not only helping to restart America, but you know when you build wealth and opportunity, you can hire whoever you like. 
You can donate, you, you can create a charity and give to whoever you like. And that's by the way that philanthropy came from entrepreneurs. I mean, Rockefeller Foundation came from Nelson Rockefeller Connecting. So, uh, you know, the Ford Foundation, as I said earlier, came from the Ford, uh, from Henry Ford as an entrepreneur. So I want you to think about becoming an entrepreneur, a hero and a shero in your neighborhood, becoming a civil rights leader, not just a civil rights leader. Let me make this personal. Uh, now, I, I, I didn't finish college, by the way. I had one year of city college. I have a, you know, honorary PhD. Uh, and I, you know, got you know d degrees of completion from Harvard and all that kind of stuff. And people give me honorary, you know, acknowledgments all the time. But the reality is, uh, I was an entrepreneur since I was 10 years old. I failed a hundred times by the time I was 18. I was homeless for six months of my life when I was 18. And so that was really, really my college education, if you will. But from the age of really 18 to 26 years of age, everything crystallized in my life. My purpose, and this is really what I'm talking to you about, my purpose crystallized in my life. And luckily my mother allowed me to drift a little bit. She allowed me to make mistakes. She allowed me to slip and fall. She allowed me to scrape my knee and get back up again and brush myself off and, and try again. And it was when I was 26, really, when I you know, found Operation Hope and found my mission in life. So, so young people, I want you to, to you know, go to Europe, go to Africa, right? <laughs> Don't just go to Europe, go to Europe, cool, but also go to Africa, which is really cool. Uh, you may not come back because it's so cool. Go to the Caribbean. I mean, travel the world. Go to Latin America. Buy a plane ticket. Don't just buy a, a stereo system, right? Don't go buy some new Air Jordans. Go buy you a plane ticket and go someplace you've never been because this is your opportunity. This five-year window, you get to be free before mortgages and car notes and, and hopefully children. Hopefully you don't have children already. Some of you may already, but hopefully you don't yet. Uh, and you don't have husbands and wives and liabilities and responsibilities. You can just dream. And parents, don't live your life through your kids. Let them be themselves. You're going to be, because if you don't, they're going to be just as resentful of you as you were of your parents. <laughs> I mean, did you like when your parents told you what to do, what not to do with your life, what, where to go to work? You know, do you want your kid to be a lawyer just because you are a lawyer? You want your kid to be a doctor because you were a doctor? You want your kid to work for the Postal Service because you work for the Postal Service? You want your kid to work for the Trash Collection Sanitation Department because you work there? Uh, you know, so so be careful about how much you love your children. You can overlove them. You can smother them and smother their dreams. They may not actually want to do what you want. Them. So Ambassador Young was telling me about a young man who went to the best schools. I think it was Harvard, actually. African American uh, and went and got a great job and um, you know was on Wall Street. His dad was on Wall Street. Make a long story short, uh, he committed suicide after doing a huge deal on Wall Street because he had made money but he hadn't found joy in his life because he was not living his life. He was living his parents' life. He was doing what he thought his parents wanted him to do, uh, not what he wanted him to do. Likewise, I had another friend of mine who said that his brother at age 30 quit his job. I'm not encouraging you to quit your job at 30, by the way. Uh, this is somebody who was very wealthy. They could afford to do it. Quit his job at 30 years of age to go find his real purpose. But don't wait to 30 because now you got kids because he had kids and mortgages and all that kind of stuff. You get a chance right now, right out of, out of college, to reimagine everything, to help to, to be part of, of really changing the world and not end up one of these 60-year-old, 50-year-old, 40-year-old, 70-year-old people that I run into whose get up and go has gone up and went. And I'm not beating up on, on older people. I'm older. My man, Sir James, is older, but we're not old, okay? Sir James, we're not old, right? At all. No, not at all. We're unbought and unbossed. Is that right, Sir James? That's correct, sir. That's right. right? So we, we're young in spirit, but, we're, but we still believe. A lot of people have their get up and goes, got up and with. Their dreams have died. They're cynical. They're skeptical. Uh, they're not skeptical. They're cynical. They're, they, they, they don't believe anymore. Uh, and all the hope has been beat out of them. When you're born, you're born uh, uh, perfect. You know, a child is born loving, believing, and hope, faith, confidence, joy, trust, honesty, integrity, and then the world be, treats you or teaches you or encourages you to not believe, to not trust, to distrust. You learn racism, you learn hate, you learn disgust and disrespect and all these hateful things as an adult. So I want you to give your kids a chance to be Martin Luther King Jr., to be uh, you know, the next Rockefellers, to be the next CEOs and heroes and sheroes, to be the next inventors, to be the next Harriet Tubmans. We are living in history right now, and I want you to encourage your kids to dream again. Last point. If you dropped out of high school or college, I want you to drop back in. Now, my mother left high school when she was 
I think eighth or ninth grade because her parents encouraged her to go work on the farm and not go work in the, in, and learn in school because back in the South, education for women was not encouraged, which was wrong, by the way. And, and I, I love how rainbows only follow storms. Seventy percent of all those attending HBCUs today are women. So it, it all came back around. But my mother went back to Juanita Smith. I'm so proud of you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, my, uh, my mother went back to college day 62 and got her high school diploma and marched with cap and gown with 18 year olds. So if it, 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 today is not about K through 12, it's K through college. And, and, and you need to get as much education as you can handle because it is the, the ultimate way to eradicate poverty is to know more. And, and by the way, I've continued getting education every day. I may not have gone to traditional school, but I consider life my school and I'm always learning. I'm reading 20 books at one time. I want you to be obsessed with learning. Don't drop out of life, drop back into life. Figure out what your niche is and go get you some education. All, whenever, by the way, whenever somebody says something really not kind to me on one of these videos because I'm pushing the envelope, I always go to their profile page. It's always the same guy. Not the same guy, the same type of guy. High school education, no college education, no travel, no job typically, at least not one that's obvious. And he's upset at life basically, and I'm basically in his face talking about, you know, the last 30 years of life have not been wonderful, maybe you need to reset it, and they like to, they're not down with that message, so they'd rather uh, just revel in the misery. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you there's a choice. There's an option. You can reclaim your life. Hey, Moses didn't know what he was, what he was doing until he was 80. <laughs> I mean, Nelson Mandela came out of prison after 27 years, close to 70, and changed the world. What can you do? So if you're, in, if you're just graduating from college, don't just get a job, get a life. If you're a parent of somebody who's graduating from college, don't just encourage your kid to get a job. Encourage them to make a great life. Not your life. Better than your life. Don't hold them back, lift them up. And if you dropped out of high school or dropped out of college, I want you to drop back in. Malcolm X left prison and dropped back into life and changed the world. What can you do? I'm out, I'll respond to the questions offline. Let's see what we got here. We have uh, Nisi Williams, uh, my friend uh, Delia Acosta joined, Kirby Carla, you are speaking the, tr the absolute truth, thank you. Uh, LaShawn Bradford Crook, a man. Roz Wilson, I appreciate you. I appreciate you too. Terrence Moore, my class jo just got excited about your testimony about your mom. Yeah, she's an amazing woman. Uh, again, if you didn't hear that, she uh, left school. Well, she didn't leave school. Her parents didn't encourage her to go to school, but she went back at age 62 and got her high school diploma and marched with cap and gown. Uh, with 18 year olds and had no shame in her game, right? Uh, she loved herself, she had pride in herself, she respected herself and could care less what anybody else thought about it. And my mother is addicted to learning, addicted to life. She traveled to probably 20 countries with me around the world and I'm proud uh, of her. Um, love your videos, higher learning, it is a life, a life, a lifetime. That's Mike Yee, uh, Chauncey Williams, stay blessed, thank you. Um, Dapsa Ola, Corey Hall, I quit my job at 32, laugh out loud. Okay, I hope you had a plan, Corey. Uh, I have a plan about quitting your job. Never give up your old shoes until you get some new ones and make sure the new ones fit first. Amen, Sir James? Amen. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, uh, Jasmine Davis, got to go back to work. <laughs> I love that. LaShawn Bradford Cook, same thing I encountered my daughter, uh, encouraged my daughter and students to do. Perfect. All right, I'll, I'll answer this stuff offline. I got to go in the Federal Reserve. I got a couple special videos for you this week. Out. Hope this helped. Live your life with both feet. The Bible suggests be hot or be cold. If you're lukewarm, I'll spat you out. Translation even God doesn't like mediocrity. Do not go through all this stuff. Just to... as you can tell from these reconnections, I never give up, and neither should you. Peace and light. I'm out. Love you.